Why arm takeoffs? Because with arm takeoffs, you can just about eliminate the squawking. And let's take this rather complex subject one segment at a time. First of all, what is squawking? Well, that's when we break the seal, the vacuum seal, between the uh, inflation liner and uh, uh, the teat, and the liner slips down a little bit and we get inrushing air. Very typical case, for example, is right here. One quarter milked out early, and the milker in this case very conscientiously took that teat cup off that particular quarter, folded it over, and laid it on the claw. However, this teat cup now adds weight to the rear quarter. And sure enough, that's the one that milks out next. Again, the teat collapses just a little bit, and with the additional weight, the second teat cup pulls down, and bingo, again, we get that dreaded squawking. You see, squawking is something we need to avoid at all costs. I'm sure if you have kept up with the scientific literature at all, you are aware that squawking, the tremendous amount of inrushing air, causes reverse jets or impacts against the teat ends and therefore propels rest milk, potentially loaded with bacteria, into the teat. Now that is sort of old hat knowledge for quite a while already. You remember a few minutes ago we talked about Dr. Dave Galton and the work he did at Cornell University. Dave coined the term RPG, reverse pressure gradients. What does he mean by that? Let me quote from his paper. RPGs are created when the negative pressure inside the teat is greater than the pressure outside the teat. Now that's a little bit confusing, but it really shouldn't be, or for that matter, let's see whether we can clarify it just a little bit. Take a look at these three pictures. Here we have normal milking. In other words, let's assume we're milking with 14 inches of vacuum. That's the vacuum we have below the teat end. Inside the teat, we have a somewhat different pressure for sure. The pressure is higher, and therefore we get milk flow from the teat into the teat cups. So far, so good. Here we are at the end of milking. There's no more milk inside the udder, and therefore no more overpressure. Matter of fact, the vacuum from below the teat now transmits or transfers or creeps into the udder, and here we have equal pressure. 14 inches of vacuum below the teat, 14 inches of vacuum inside the teat. Still no problem. But what happens if we get squawking? The inrushing air lowers the vacuum below the teat, or put differently, it increases the pressure below the teat. Since we still have 14 inches of vacuum inside the teat, that high vacuum now sucks the air right in. And you see, now if there's a droplet of milk left below the sphincter muscle, again possibly loaded with bacteria, da -da, there we are, and we have a new infection. Reverse pressure gradients due to squawking. That is Dave Galton's contribution to the dairy industry. I tell you, I'm impressed. You know why? For 20, 30 years, the community has known that removing the machine under residual vacuum or pulling the teat cups off with a jerk or squawking causes mastitis. We have known that for a long time. What we didn't know is exactly how does that actually happen. You know, Dave actually implanted tiny pressure transducers in the teat to find this particular phenomenon, to investigate this particular situation. Very impressive. But that's how it goes. Let's take a look at the subject of squawking from a different angle. What causes squawking? 
You know, there's a bunch of smart people around the world in our industry that have investigated and researched that very question for many, many years, for decades for that matter, what causes squawking. What we have learned, there are many things that contribute to squawking or liner slips. The design of the liner, for sure, the design of the mouse piece has a great influence. The diameter of the teeth, most certainly. But let's not overlook that the incidence and the number of squawks or liner slips also has to do with the weight of the machine. I think we can reasonably agree on it. You see, imagine for a second there was a milking machine or milking unit that had no weight. One designed from styrofoam, for example. Now, it's not possible, but we can imagine that. If there would be no downward force, the teat cups would stay where they belong, but good, because the vacuum would keep it there. In other words, the weight of the machine has an influence on squawking, on the number of liner slips. You see, and that is where arm takeoffs come in once again. Why arm takeoffs? Because you can just about eliminate squawking. Let me show you. Here we are in the parlor, and sure enough, there is a front teat cup, milked out a little early, squawking like the dickens. Why? Take a look at this claw chain here between the arm and the claw. The entire weight of the claw and the entire weight of the teat cups are on the other. Now let's go ahead and raise the arm up in the position where it belongs, namely where it just about supports the entire weight of the claw and the teat cups and the milk hose. Let's not overlook the milk hose. You see, if you have ever wondered why you are getting more slips more liner slips on the front two quarters than on the rear two quarters, there is your reason. Because the weight of the milk hose puts additional weight on the two front quarters. You see, with the arm raised in the proper position, the milk hose is supported just right, the weight of the claw, the teeth cups is supported just right, and there we are walking just about eliminated and I'm not saying 100% and that brings up an interesting question for good milk out do we need the weight of the claw on the other I don't know how much experience you have milking in an automated parlor but I wouldn't be surprised. Your first reaction is going to be absolutely yes. My cows do need the weight to milk out good and clean. Well, do they? And if they do, why? I would suggest that the only reason your cows need the weight for good milk out is because they are used to it, they are trained that way, and that's the way it works. Let me tell you a story. You know, 15, 18, 20 years ago, when we first started selling arm takeoffs in Southern California, every time when we fired up the installation, we were extra careful to instruct the milkers, make absolutely sure that the weight of the claw is on the udder and not on the arm. We trained the milkers that way because the owners, the early owners of our takeoffs, our early customers, made that point very clear. My cows, our cows need the way to milk out. And so over and over again to the milkers, make sure the weight is on the other. Don't support the weight of the claw by the arm. And so it went for three, four, five years. You know, and then life goes by. We get interested in other things, manage a grown company. The owners are not so excited about the arm takeoffs anymore and they don't keep an eye on the details anymore. And the years go by. A few years later, I took the time to visit three, four, five, six, seven of our good old customers in Southern California, those milking two, three, four thousand cows at a crack. 
You know, you walk into the barn and the first thing I noticed, every one of those claws supported by the arm, none of the weight on the other. The first reaction is, what is going on here? We have a problem. And just before I go to the Mirka and that old story, the weight has to be on the other, don't you put it on the arm, it hit me. I said, wait a minute, what are we looking at here? What has happened? You see, over those last three, four, five, six, seven years that they have had the arm takeoffs, production has gone up just wonderful. Somatic cell count has come down very nice. The cows are happy, the Mirka is happy. So who the hell am I to complain? What happened was very simple. The milkers were the only ones left in the barn after all the excitement and the training had died down from the early years. And the milkers did what is good for the milkers and good for the cows. They learned that if they support the weight of the claw with the arm, they have peace and quiet in the barn. No more fall-offs, no more squawk. And you see, the cows got used to it. Just wonderful. You know it. Cows get used to any, anything, particularly heifers. You take a first calf fresh heifer and you milk her from day one with no weight on the other and she'll milk out close to perfect. And there you are. No squawking, no fall off which makes the milkers job easy, but not only that, you eliminated a major source of new infections. 